Heavily damaged. Fast reload activated. everyone and welcome back to world of warship splits with terry it's a uh, tier 6 week sort of <laughs> because i have a lot of mid-tier content to um to go through and we'll kick that off with the perfectly snowy and wintry i mean for the people who are living on the other side of the world where it's actually cold right now with the queen elizabeth the tier 6 british tech tree battleship now the Queen Elizabeth, uh, obviously being the lead ship of the Queen Elizabeth class, is a World War, or was a World War One vintage battleship, and uh, she was refitted quite a bit. This is what we're seeing here. This is the World War Two edition, and she's been in. She's been quite busy. She's been in a lot of uh, in a lot of actions. This is the second Queen Elizabeth class ship we actually have in the game. The other one being the War Spite, which is even more famous. But um, one story that I found particularly hilarious, and I haven't gotten the details on it yet, just kind of the general gist, is that uh, during the Mediterranean campaign, which was all, which is always criminally underrated, I think, in general, when it comes to World War II naval campaigns, but uh, during the Mediterranean campaign, the British had to, well, make up for the fact that the French were no longer <laughs> occupying things down there and had to face off against the German Air Force and the Italian Navy because the British were holding two rather important points for them, one of them being Malta and that being a base which was threatening the supply routes between continental Europe and northern Africa where the British were locked in battle with the Germans and the Italians 
and the other one being the Suez Canal because the Brits were rather dependent on overseas holdings and a lot of the Commonwealth, well, need, shipping needed to go through there. So uh, that was a somewhat critical theater. And the Queen Elizabeth was part of Force H, one of the slightly more irregular forces. And they, they were... They were, she and HMS Valiant, another Queen Elizabeth class battleship, were in port in Alexandria in Egypt when something similar to what, uh, to, to the Austro Hungarian battleship we had a while ago happened. Italian frogmen <laughs> were riding manned torpedoes and placing mines on her, which exploded and made holes and she took on water. Now, all the Italians were captured, so. Uh, they didn't have a ch they didn't really have a chance to, to report back that uh, of their success. Uh, two of them actually made it out of the out of the harbor after the attack, but they were uh, and they were posing as French sailors. But maybe their French accent weren't that this great because they were eventually captured and and um, locked up. So while both HMS Valiant and the Queen Elizabeth herself were actually out of action. They weren't underwater per se. <laughs> they were just a bit low in the water. So their decks were still up uh, across the surface. So the British just pretended that they were fine, even though the Italians technically act actually had ruler of the seas for a while while these two battleships were repaired. And I, I really need to find the details on that. I do have a couple of books on the Mediterranean campaign. I just haven't read them yet. But uh, that sounded absolutely hilarious, and it worked because it. By, uh, I don't think the Italians actually went out and, abu and capitalized on that victory that they had there. So I did mention that the Queen Elizabeth is in her is in her Second World War configuration, and uh, we'll, we'll see that in a, in a second. So she is the first one in the British line that gets the three hundred eighty millimeter main guns, thirty nine thousand hit points. Um, she's occasionally armored but not supremely so so this is not a new mexico or or a bayern or something um, it's not as squishy as the french ships but she does have to watch out a little bit uh, this is not so much a close range ship but more uh, more of a long range or like medium range like second second line ship i would say she can hold her own for a bit but um, she does take damage quite uh, quite a lot if she's being shot at by large caliber uh, armor piercing. She is occasionally maneuverable. The speed isn't great with 23 or 24 knots, but it's also not as dreadful as the 21 knots that you find in certain other ships. And um, her maneuverability is not terrible either. The guns are fun. They are not super accurate, but the uh, the 381 millimeter mains and it's, it's kind of the same setup as you get on, on the Bayern or on the Warspite. Uh, they, they do, on the Elizabeth, a very reasonable amount of HE damage. And as is customary with the Tech Tree British uh, battleships, they actually, she actually has a very good penetration with the high explosives. So you can and will citadel things with the high explosive on, um, on the ship. The armor piercing, I use it occasionally if I have something like light cruisers at point blank range or something to shoot at. Um, but it, it, while it does more damage, it's it's not as good as on the Warspite. The Warspite, in common with some of the uh, some of the other premiums, like the Hood, for example, has a much better armor piercing and also penetration than this one. Uh, I, I mostly stay on the HE with this ship. The turret, turrets, uh, turrets aren't bad, but again, you only get eight guns. So you do have to be aware that you don't get the uh, one-shot destroyer skill that you had in uh, <laughs> ships like the Orion. The secondaries. Now, in when, she, when they were built, the Queen Elizabeth class had 150mm uh, secondaries, and you still find some of these on the war spite. But like I mentioned, this is, a re this is the rebuild. So these were removed, and they were replaced with 113mm guns. Now... We see them here all scattered around the ship, little little dual dual gun turrets for these things. Uh, these are not auto secondaries. These are actually manually second manual secondaries. They don't do a huge amount of damage, but um, well, they they are useful in a pinch. You do get a fair amount of them, and uh, they are I think dual purpose, which means that for a tier six battleship, she actually has a pretty respectable 
uh, anti-air, especially on the large caliber, which is where the 100 millimeter come, uh, guns come in. Uh, concealment wise, well, we don't need really to talk about it much. I have used the, I have set her up for, um, for gun operation, for getting the guns to a faster reload. Because again, you don't have the massive alpha strike that you have on, uh, on other ships. She does rely to a certain degree on fires to, to rack up the damage. It's not as easy as in, say, a Bayern with the armor piercing to uh, just, even with eight guns, to do a, lot of, uh, do a lot of damage over time. That's why I actually prioritize the guns here. She has equipment wise, I have the main battery mod one for uh, turret rotation because, well, the secondaries aren't that great. You don't get the same set as you get on the War Spite with the 150s, and I think uh, she gets a set of auto secondaries. You don't get that here. You only get the manual secondaries. She's a little bit like the hood in that regard, which has uh, similar secondaries. So I did go with turret rotation because, um, for me, British battleships so far are relatively agile, and um, I do I do find the need more often than not to turn my guns around. <laughs> if I'm getting into, into fights with things like destroyers. I have the propulsion mod in two because we can't get the, uh, we can't get the fire resistance quite yet. And with her 10% fire and flooding resistance, that's really not a great uh, place to be, especially that you're starting tier six, you're starting to see things like uh, de Grasses, or you get into bottom tier games, you get um, f f shot at by things like the shores and she does get set on fire relatively easily and she burns quite a bit. I mean she sets things on fire as well by herself but yeah. And the steering in slot 3 is uh, much much recommended. So again I would say a second line ship and um, positioning is important. She does rely on uh, on getting fire set. Uh, the other thing that she's very very good at obviously is destroyers. Now again while she doesn't have the alpha strike like an Orion to uh, to just outright delete destroyers, she can still do a very respectable amount of damage, and she does get a large set of secondaries that um, that chip in at at five kilometers. Now, if we compare her to the War Spite, which is the premium tier six, um, the War Spite gets more health, and I think the War Spite, yeah, the War Spite is significantly more maneuverable than the Queen Elizabeth. So the War Spite is very powerful in that, um, and, and same setup, by the way. They do get uh, technically the same guns because it's the same class, but the War Spite being the premium has a lower fire chance and the better armor piercing, whereas the uh, Queen Elizabeth is more on the high explosive side of things. And like I mentioned, the War Spite actually retains, um, uh, re retains two of her, uh, actually more, more than two, <laughs> uh, of her 150 millimeter guns. As, as the secondaries, which are armor-piercing secondaries, similar to what the Germans have. And she gets a set of auto-secondaries as well, which don't do a huge but, uh, amount of things, but you know, they're there. So the, I always uh, call the war spite the premium buy-in. <laughs> uh, uh, they feel somewhat similar. But yeah, the war spite is a different beast altogether. The Queen Elizabeth does not play the same, and you would be more on the, on the high explosive side of things. Now, commander skill-wise, uh, what do I have? I have the underwater protection, the torpedo alert, obviously. I do have the artillery maintenance because, again, I do play her as a little bit hanging back in the beginning. Uh, the victorious charge. I have the fire supremacy because she does get, if we look over at, at the ship skill, she does get two rapid reloads, so you obviously want one more. And also, if we're looking up the tech tree, with the British ships, if we get up all the way up to tier 10 with the Conqueror, she also gets two rapid reloads. So it's sensible to pick another one because you, three rapid reloads is a good number. Uh, the exploit weakness obviously is a skill that you want because you do rely on fires and ships that are on fire and then do damage with, uh, with subsequent shots. Um, I will put the fully prepared in here and uh, obviously eventually you want the master reloader on the ship and probably the IFHE skill, although I haven't played around with that yet. But given how good the penetration on the high explosive shells is on the British ships, I would say that's definitely a way to go. All right, uh, supplies wise, nothing surprising here. Standard battleship loadout. 
And uh, lastly, if we look at the camouflage, I haven't put the historical on, obviously, because I'm just um, grinding across the ship. It's not a ship that I would necessarily want to keep, because I already have the War Spite in tier 6 if I ever want to play a British ship. She gets more hit points, more range, better dispersion and torpedo damage reduction. Uh, yeah, all good things, especially the dispersion, because uh, the, the guns can be a little, a little bit trollish at times. And since you only get eight of them, it's a bit of a thing. The battle honors, I, uh, it's set fire and eventually um, destroy 15 battleships. We're still at tier six, so no shipyard materials in here quite yet. It's just money and, and XP. So this is something that you can either take or leave. If you're grinding through it and you say, okay, I really don't care about 75,000K because I happen to have 47 million silver in my account. And you know, that stuff just, just piles up. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's too much. This is my personal account, all right? This is not the press account. <laughs> um, yeah. So to, today we'll just be sailing with the Sea Storm, just, uh, which doesn't give, give us any bonuses, so just um, XP and silver, but no actual uh, ship skill bonus. So without further ado, let's uh, get into a game. In this first battle, um, you do see that the Black Bayan from the Blitz Pass uh, is currently rather popular because people are trying to get through the challenge. Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them in this game. <laughs> Oh well, um, we're playing on straight, and if you haven't seen Yeah Boy's excellent video on how, like, what the what his preferred strategy for playing straight is, then you absolutely absolutely should, and I'll leave a link in the description. This battle is a perfect example of what happens when your team all just works together and follows that. Anyway. Uh, we are top tier, Podwojski and Gnevny are the only destroyers in the enemy team, so nothing long range, and um, a whole flurry of black bayans. So we're spawning on the three ship side, which means we've got four ships against us, and given the sheer amount of black bayans in this game, there's at least going to be two or three of them. So uh, we have a Gnevny here with us, and I am immediately turning towards B Cup. And the reason for that is that I have the range to actually support A Cup, if our team decides to go. But um, let's see what these two are going. So the Gnevni is going for the A cup. And um, keep an eye on what the Gnevni is doing because I'm starting to move towards B. I'm not calling out B because then everybody might rush B and we're gonna lose C and then get get, um, get cross-fired. But look at what the Gnevni is doing. He's running into the cup and he's a very fast, uh, a fast destroyer. So he's grabbing A cup which gives the enemy a team, and I'm not spotted, which means the enemy team has the impression that um, we're, we're pushing A. I'm holding my guns right now. There's one battleship spotted over there. But then the Gnevni turns, and the Black Bayern here with me also is heading towards B. Now he's opening up, so the enemy team knows that at least one ship is heading B cup. And uh, there's this enemy destroyer capturing A, and now I'm detected and I can start opening up. But um, we're now linking up with our team around B cup, and we're play, um, we are playing around, we're playing for fire supremacy. So this is a fighting retreat, what we're doing right now. I, I am full speed ahead, uh, heading, uh, just, just firing, hoping that the Black Bayern takes some of the shots, but the Black Bayern is now, is now uh, behind an island. So that guy controlled damage cons a single fire, which is usually not a great idea when you have a British battleship shooting at you. <laughs> so let's see if we can get a nice perma fire going on him. But yeah, there are one, two black bayans that I can see already, and I think there's a third one right behind there. That's one perma fire, and um, we're heading into, right into B cup, uh, which we, well, so we, our team controls C, and the enemy team controls A. But we're we're all running for B now to get uh, to to defeat them in detail. So there's one, two, three black bayans down here, and we're just all gonna that's two perma fires. And um, we're all going to try and, as much as possible, kill the enemy team around uh, around C Cup and then use our fire supremacy. So uh, I am taking all the fire right now. Ow, Mr. Podwojski, do you think it is wise to chase a British battleship? <laughs> you do know what I've got loaded, right? Okay. Uh, there goes half the Podwojski. So, <laughs> so that teaches him not to do this. And um, he very conveniently stops, gets scared, um, and um, probably doesn't want to get any closer to me. Meanwhile, I'm still taking fire from all the Black Bayans down there, who are obviously trying to focus someone down, which is a reasonable thing to do, so I'm just keep running. And I get another shot. Podwojski hasn't learned his lesson yet. Now he should have. And he survives on a sliver of health, but uh, he's out of my secondary range, and um, someone else can finish him off, because I do need to run. 
Because someone keeps keeps setting me on fire. I don't know if that's one of the Black Bayans that's actually shooting HE or if it's the Podvoisky. But um, uh, let's see if we can get get him from here. He seems to have beached, so shots out, uh, main guns. And I am relatively low on health at this point. Yep, there's the Podvoisky dead. So I'm just going to keep going because we are holding two cups. Oh, there's the Gnevny. Hello. So I'm, I'm using my rapid reload a little bit early just to get shots ready for the Gnevny and get him on low health. Uh, he's turning and running, but he's got himself um, set against an island and someone keeps setting me on fire. So that's three nice hits on the, on the Gnevny. Fire is out and I should be about-ish out of range out of these, of these black bayans back there because if someone sets me on fire now, then that's that. But you know, there's now three of them left. And there's six of us. Let's see if I can get some parting shot at, at the Gnevni there. Yeah, this was a fighting retreat. And um, we are completely controlling two-thirds of the map at this point. Someone else can kill the Gnevni. I can uh, re restore some of my health. And now I just need to turn around. And then now it's just a mop-up operation. Because uh, we are we are well positioned. We're holding two caps. We are ahead uh, about 300 points ahead. Because uh, our Gnevni has just uh, finished off that low-health Gnevni after I blapped him in the side. And now it's just three Black Bismarcks left, who haven't been able to do a hell of a lot. Because we, we did the fighting retreat towards B Cup, we linked up with the rest of our team, we defeated with uh, Fire Supremacy whatever, whatever enemy team was left scattered around B and C. And now these three are all alone against seven of us. <laughs> so uh, while I haven't done a huge amount of damage, um, I have been shot at a fair bit. Which, uh, which is a good thing when you're in a battleship. And now um, now they are realizing far too late that uh, they are not supposed to be down there, um, but that they are now massively outnumbered and it's just a cleanup operation at this point and probably just uh, to getting as much damage in as they possibly can because uh, they've, they've conveniently lost the game for us. <laughs> and Gnevely takes back A. He's got free reign. There's no way they're going to do anything about him at this point. Uh, we're just going to focus him down and um, yeah, uh, yeah, that, uh, we're just, just collecting some more damage now. But yeah, that, that was absolutely textbook on how to play this map and um, yeah, like uh, again, if you haven't seen it, watch Yearboy's video, he's explaining that in great detail as well. That's another nice fire going. Oh, you shouldn't have damage con that. You would have burned out. Let's see if I can finish him off with the secondaries, but nah, one of the black bayans take him out. I'm just going to use him as a bit of a shield here because I have done um, the majority of the tanking and there's just one ship left. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see who gets him first. But yeah, um, one problem with this strategy, obviously, is that the team needs to follow. And this is an example how the whole team, without much communication, has perfectly played, played to, this, uh, to this strategy. The Gnevni has captured A in the beginning, which was a, which was a, um, a feint to get the enemy to believe that we're actually going for A. Uh, and while not being spotted themselves, then we have all immediately uh, done the fighting retreat towards B Cup, have managed to survive, all of us, and um, we have linked up with our team, had fire supremacy around, um, around the other two capture circles, have defeated the enemy in detail because we've we've been able to concentrate almost all of our team on half of the enemy team, and then um, now we have the rest of our team. Well, still focusing on half the on the other half of the enemy team. Uh, of course, if if your team doesn't follow this, and let's say two out of your your three ships are um, we're we're going for A cap, and then one goes for B, um, this tends not to work out all that well. If, uh, if if they don't really follow it. All right, there goes the Gnevni. He just finishes off the Black Bayan. Well-deserved, excellently played by the Gnevni. And, um, but yeah, if, if it works, it's beautiful to watch. And the other team does not stand a chance whatsoever. So uh, yeah, well-deserved MVP for the Gnevni. And um, yeah, that, that was that. Where did we come in the team? Uh, somewhere in the middle, but we've done our job and uh, well done, team. So, given that that didn't show too much of what the actual Queen Elizabeth is capable of, but was still a rather really nice battle tactically, let's do another one. And here we are on Trident in a domination battle. And in this one, they are going to make me work for my money. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Uh, bottom tier up against the Hear You, West Virginia, Double Black Bayern, Leander, Nuremberg, and Gaja. Now, Gaja. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if I can get him in front of me, 
and I had a clear shot on him, not so much of a problem, but if he's, uh, he can definitely stealth toward me. Uh, carrier, I do have a respectable AA, but I still do need to watch out, especially with the top tier carrier. And yeah, obviously the Black Bayans, I don't want to get anywhere near. And the West Virginian neither. So I haven't played the West Virginian, but I, is it a Colorado class? I don't know. I'll, I'll have to look that up. But um, I'm assuming heavily armored shotgun. So let's go. Trident on domination. I like this. I like domination maps. Domination battles are still my favorite um, because of the tactical opportunities that you have. So let's see. With only one destroyer and being in a British battleship, I'm going to head over to sea. And the reason for that is I can't be cross-fired on sea because I'm a bottom tier ship. And... Um, I have some islands that I can use to cover myself if I need to do a fighting retreat from sea, if it turns out that the whole enemy team is concentrating on sea. And we have a Brooklyn with us, which is great, because that means that uh, we're, we're even more safe from carrier. And we've got another battleship following us as well. But um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to check what that is in a second. I'm just keeping my eyes out where the Gaja is. Uh, it's in New York. How did, how did we get a New York in... Oh, it's a fail plat must have been a fail platoon that I didn't notice. Okay, Nuremberg spotted. Um, blind shot here because I can't actually see him. Uh, just speculative, but he can't see me either, so it's I'm, I'm safe to fire because I can't be spotted because there's nothing there to spot me. don't think anything has, um, has actually found its mark here. But, uh, yeah, uh, he's against the island, and so I'm going to use the rapid reload and get a couple shots in. But yeah, not the greatest accuracy at this range, uh, but uh, we'll just one hit. Okay, so there's the enemy West Virginia. Now, it doesn't look like they're pushing C cup at all. They're, qu they're fo focusing A and B. So we are, oh, now there comes a Black Bayern. Okay, now, um, I have a Brooklyn with me, which means we can set some fires. But he seems to be focusing something else right now. And I, I do want to try and keep that island between myself and the West Virginia. Okay, Black Bayern damage comes a single fire. Thank you. And now it's just a matter of um, setting some perma fires. And the Brooklyn has uh, has seen what happens and obviously starts to join in on the party. Now yeah, shots out. Uh, and I am getting shot at by the West Virginia, but again, the shots are long range and they're not up. There we go, triple perma fire. <laughs> ah, thank you. Okay, so now I don't have anything else to shoot at and I do not want to get shot at uh, by the West Virginia if I can help it, especially at close range. So we'll just keep firing at the, uh, at the Black Bayern over there. Um, just get some more damage. And oh, there's a Leander who's, who's gotten brave. And we, we do get, have to use our first heal at this point because we have gotten a couple of shots in, but that's fine. We're in a defensive position and we're at long enough range that the Bayern can't really reasonably do anything. Oh, he's out. his fires are no longer burning. Oh, well, okay. We'll see if we can do something about that. Uh, shots out. And we are giving we are giving broadside to B Cup, but we're currently holding B Cup, so I don't think the West Virginia is any threat to us or that other Black Bayern over there. But um, B Cup is rather is rather empty at this point because we have all three battleships concentrated around C, which is unnecessary. Okay, it's another fire on the Black Bayern. He damaged comes a single fire. Shots out. <laughs> in all fairness, he he had to. Okay, no fires from my side. Uh, Yes, uh, that's a couple of dive bombers and not much I need to do about that. Um, but yeah, I do want to get that um, that black buy. No, I'm not going to damage con that. Is he stopping? No, he's still reversing. And, um, and still we have all three battleships concentrated over here, which is unnecessary because there's nothing really... Well, there's a Nuremberg to shoot at, but um, we have lost a ship around B Cup. And it looks like that West Virginia is going to loop around. Okay, there come some some, uh, some torpedo bombers. Now these I do need to dodge if I can. So I put her in reverse, full on turn. Meanwhile, firing at the Black Bayern. <laughs> okay, I took one torp. That's not too terrible. So full turn in. And uh, that's another aircraft down. The Brooklyn is probably helping as well here with the AA. So we've shot all these aircraft down, only one torpedo coming in. And that's a miss. Okay, let's see if I can finish off that Bayern, and then uh, we'll see if we can do something about B Cup, because we've lost B, and they're going to be able to push through to the carrier. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, Bayern is dead. We've got four ships concentrated around here, chasing that one Nuremberg, so we do need to get over at B Cup, and there's a Black Bayern. Is he firing high explosive at me? I think he is. Oh, well. <laughs> not, I'm not complaining. I am not complaining, but the, um, the West Virginia is pushing through. Okay, that's one fire. Please damage con that. No? Okay. Come on, team, please. Uh, we don't need all four of us here. We need to do something about B Cup, because there's also a cruiser coming through, and there's still that black bayon. Okay, if you don't want to damage con, that's fine, and let it burn. I'll set you on fire again. 
Um, let's see if we can get you. Okay. The West Virginia is going to start chasing the carrier. That's two fires. So either he's not, his damage con is on cooldown or he just doesn't want to. Oh, no, he da no, he damage con. Okay, so this player is smart and he hasn't damage con a single fire. Well done. And I'm going to try and save the carrier, which means I can't push into B cup because um, I am on 26,000 hit points and I don't want to be killed. And all these three guys over there are chasing what? The carrier? I don't know. I'm going to try and save our carrier from that West Virginia over there. Uh, because he's been dropping... Oh my gosh, where does these... What's what's that torpedo drop? Okay, Leander. Uh, Leander has torps, so I do need to watch out. And as the Black Bayern is pushing forward, uh, that's a fire on the West Virginia. He would damage Conrad if he's on low health. But he's on low health. So hopefully the carrier can, can finish that one off. But the Leander, he might need some help with. So again, up nose towards the Black Bayern. And I'm going to start shooting at the Leander. How are we on points? We're still ahead on points. Uh, but uh, we do need that. We do need B cup, and they are still milling about with a carrier back there. I don't know what the rest of my team is doing. But <laughs> okay, uh, can I get another shot off at the Leander? Okay, there are the Leander tops. Leander is smoking up, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shoot here. I can only get my forward guns out. Um, there's Gaja. Okay, I can deal with Gaja if I need to. Uh, Miyoko, Miyoko, you can deal with Gaja, right? You're a cruiser. You deal with Gaja. I'll go cap. Uh, I'll go cap B and try to um, and then try to prevent that Leander from killing our carrier. Uh, he's cool. Where is he going? Is he dodging those torps? Mm, no, but the carrier seems to be missing his torps permanently. So um, just going shots out. Can I deal with the Leander? Okay, Leander's on fire. I don't know if his damage con is on cooldown or not. But now the oh Miyoko is not dealing with the Gaja. Okay then. Uh, neither is Brooklyn really, because Brooklyn is over there, but they have fin managed to finish off the the, the, um, the enemy carrier. So now it's the big question. I need to turn my guns around. Remember why I mentioned that I have the, the module, because uh, I don't know where Gaja is going. Is he coming around this side of the island or coming around that side? But I don't want to be this close, so I'm going to full speed ahead, which isn't that much in this ship. And I'm going to bet that he's going to come this way around. Of course, he comes the other way around. Okay, so secondaries, not much here, but I'm just gonna uh, just gonna faint, 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 and then turn hard the other direction. This would be easier in a war spite, <laughs> but you can still do it. Okay, I get my rear turrets out and a couple of secondary shots, so I should be able to dodge this one. But this is um, oh clever girl. This is only one spread, so the second spread's gonna come here. So I'm gonna have to hard turn the other side. I am gonna take. Yeah, I'm probably gonna take three. It's not gonna be enough to kill me. Oh, I would have killed him still. And I think I, I would have just taken one, actually, of that one. <sighs> they made me work for this one, didn't they? <laughs> so how much did we do all in all? Um, uh, let's see. We did 71,000 damage. And we actually carried this game to a certain degree. <laughs> yeah, the enemy team didn't get much done. <laughs> so... Well done, team. Uh, well done, team. And we did 17,000 points of fire damage. See, this is what I'm talking about. Um, if you can trigger the the single damage control and then set perma fires, uh, you, you can you, rack, you 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 rely to a degree on the on the uh, fire damage, especially around tier six where nobody has a great fire and flooding resistance quite yet. You can do a decent amount of damage that way. So that's the Queen Elizabeth. Um, is she a great um, tier six battleship? Mm. She's okay. Uh, I think um, there are better tier six battleships. She doesn't. She does need to be played towards her strength. And um, given that it's tier six, you can still pull a lot of things if you really know how to use your ship well. But uh, uh, it's not. It's not a ship that I would keep, uh, especially that the war spite exists. And if I wanted to have a Queen Elizabeth class ship at tier six, then I would stick with the war spite. So that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.